in front of my boom. Oh, welcome to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Ninton. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do. And do tech good, boom. Ah, we're doing tech. <laughs> Brian, where the heck are we? We are in Fort Lauderdale, Florida at the Fort Dev Summit. At the Dev Summit. <laughs> UX is yeah. the third year of the summit, and it is a five day experience. It is a four-day immersion of workshops and yeah. all day today of speakers and a few peripheral workshops on the side. And today we are joined by one of the speakers. We are joined here with Mike Donnie. Welcome to the show, Mike. Welcome. Glad to be here. Yeah, glad to have you on. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so can you start off by telling uh, a little bit about yourself? Like, well, where, where do you work? Uh, what's your background? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm a senior UX experience architect at Citrix. Nice. Uh, I primarily work on our web uh, properties, our uh, Citrix.com, or some other smaller sites, our job sites, uh, things like that. So that's my the bulk of what I do. Uh, really just trying to make it all suck less. <laughs> that's my <laughs> real <laughs> UX, make yeah. it suck less. Make it that's suck right. less. <laughs> that's like, a, that would be a fantastic t shirt. Yeah. Like, have, have, great have make it suck less. Have like a watermark behind it. There you go. Size. Yeah. yeah. That's really what a lot of it, what, what it is. Yeah. Uh, the talk I actually, the talk I gave today, uh, I was talking about using the Jobs to Be Done uh, framework as a way of doing that. And really, what a lot of that is, is about minimizing. Pain, and that's what it takes to yes. make things suck less is to minimize people's pain. I now, want less pain. It, it, now, I, I find your uh, the title of your talk uh, pretty interesting, and I, I just want to read it aloud so people can hear a brief history of cup holders. Absolutely. So, yeah. can you tell us what a brief history of cup holders means? I mean, it's going to be brief too. You can tell it. It's so, it's, it's a recap <laughs> of what I think might actually be one of the most important and significant innovations in the last hundred years. Let's go. Bring us there. Seriously, if you consider <laughs> that, you know, so I'll run through that, the timeline real fast. So in 1908, the Model T comes out. By 1928, there's 15 million of them on the road. By 1947, we've got our first drive through restaurant. The first time we in our Star Wars people drive. Hmm. Well Starting 1949, some of the earliest uh, patents are coming out to put cup holders in cars. But we don't actually get cup holders in cars until 1983. Wow, that wow, really was that long? It took that long before people started to. It was the Dodge Caravan, so it had to come along in hmm. a big ugly minivan. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. That it took that, is, that long for it to actually. It really did, and so uh, you know. But when you look at it over time and you understand all these things, you start to begin to realize how invaluable they've become to us since then. Uh, in 1994, yeah. which is really where there was a big tipping point, and suddenly cup holders became more prominent and showing up in more and more vehicles. More standard, probably. It became a standard, yeah. you know, part of the design. It kind of all seemed to coincident coincidentally coincide with a lady who poured. Uh, she went to McDonald's. Oh, she bought coffee. Oh, oh the hot coffee the incident. Hot coffee incident. Yeah. That was uh, Stella Liebeck versus McDonald's. I mean, it for burns. It was 180 to 190 degree coffee, and it scalded wow. her thighs. Jesus! Yeah. All because there were no cup holders in her grandson's Ford Probe that she drove to the McDonald's in. Yeah. Uh, pretty much after that, we start seeing them everywhere. And like I say in the talk, it's like now we want them everywhere. Yeah. We want them on baby strollers. We want them on our, our oh, uh, right treadmills. Here. Well, there, <laughs> there's a little thing there you can clip it right on yeah. the desk, and there's a cup holder. We want them everywhere. We become obsessed with cup holders. You know, so the, the we don't even use them for cups all the time anymore. Now we're going to put our cell phone in there. Yeah, so put our keys yeah. in there. Or we get that little adapter so it can hold a, a tablet, you know. Uh, it's just, to me, it's one of the greatest inventions in the last hundred years. Wow, that's really amazing. So you could probably tie that to uh, a lot of different things and find a lot of lessons in that, correct? Absolutely. Well, and that's what I do. Uh, so the other part of the talk is so looking at it from a jobs to be done model, you start to ask yourselves, now you ask yourself the question, so we want to go back to the solving the problem. The real core job here is to get Yeah. That's really what it is. We want to minimize the likelihood that a drink spills. That's yeah. the job we're trying to get done. So you can use the jobs to be done model to suss that out. And you can list out all the different little jobs along the way and get a great picture and understand what you should work on. And on the flip side, once we start to have solutions, we can use the Kano model to turn around and uh, validate what does this mean to people. So if I had asked you in 1947, 
when Red opened up his drive through restaurant in Springfield, Missouri, how do you feel if you have a cup holder in your car? You might say, I don't care. No nope. car's got a cup holder. How would you feel if you don't have it? I still don't care. No car has a cup holder. Yeah. It's, they're indifferent about it at that point. But if you ask somebody today, uh, there was a study that shows that about 27% of people would actually base their car buying decision on whether or not the cup holders meet their uh, Now, why is it called a cup? Because a cup is very different shape than, I mean, a cup is a from a cup. beverage holder. A well, yeah. More of a you know, mug is what I, I think have is a cup. Never, I have not looked that deeply into why they called it a cup. But, well, but I was curious. Well, well, let, let's append to this point. There's yeah. also uh, caddies that fit uh, on top of those yeah. for a certain kind of mug. So if you have a, uh, say, I like to have a large mug of coffee, I'm going to put this caddy on top of that that fits mm -hmm. onto it, pens to the top, and now it's a, uh, a coffee mug. Holder. Right. You know, they've got adapters for them for the double gulp. Yeah, you exactly. Go to Seven Eleven, you get a double gulp. It doesn't fit into a standard cup holder. Yeah, and that so, that might be for someone, right? Right. Yeah. They built an adapter. It fits in there. Now it's just bigger around at the top. Mm -hmm. Like so, you need to write a book about this too, because if you oh, haven't, because this sounds like an, it'd be an interesting topic. This would be a I'm great book. Yeah. I am kind of hoping yeah. to do for cup holders what Don Norman did for doors. In his book, Design of Everyday Things, everybody who's read that book no longer looks at the door, walk out of a bathroom and pull a dirty handle yeah. to get out of the bathroom wondering, why did they not think to just make it swing, swing out so out. I can use yeah. my elbow or something? Your hand's more likely to be a lot dirtier coming out of the bathroom than going in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's just people Simple need to look things. at cup holders a little more closely. Now, and we still haven't perfected it. Uh, when I was doing the research for the talk, I found some uh, site online that had a whole bunch of patents. Oh, really? There's over 14,000 patents Whoa. for cup holders in cars alone. Wow. What's the more interesting one? Or, or oh, one? The, the last one, one came across, yeah. Well, the, la the, one, the one that was highest ranked on there was somebody trying to patent a version where it can either keep your drink cold or keep it warm. Oh, okay. So, like, all in one cup holder. One. Hmm. I mean, I'm surprised that hasn't. You know, come into being at this point. I mean, how many times have you you gone? I mean, imagine if it could also do it like while you, I don't know, you're drinking the car yeah, and then you it, come back out and after shopping, your drinks like all melted. That would be. It's funny you yeah. mentioned that because when I, again, when I was doing this and I, I would go through my talks with my wife, I force her to listen to me ramble on about this stuff. And usually <laughs> she just really doesn't get He crap. says, thank you. Pretty much. <laughs> she really, you know, she's so yeah. sweet for doing this, but yeah. she really is like, and she really challenges me on things. And she actually brought that one up. She goes, oh, wait, didn't somebody try putting a cooler in the glove box so you could put your thing and keep it cool? And it kind of went away. And I've got to go out and look for this oh, because I do yeah. believe somebody I I actually tried, some. yeah. like a Kia or somebody like that, yeah. tried to actually make the glove box that was basically a little mini fridge and you could put a couple of sodas or bottles of water and they were supposed to keep it cool. That's a great idea. Honestly. Apparently yeah. it was an idea that failed. Yeah. It might have just been ahead of its time. Somebody Maybe. may have asked them, hey, how would you feel if you have a refrigerated glove box? And everybody said, I don't care. I get home fast enough. So the moment people are indifferent. Give it a few years, it may be different. Yeah, maybe people go, oh, you know what, that's the... Could have been ahead of its time. No car. Exactly. As a, yeah. To go back to the uh, example, nineteen forty-four. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No cars got it now, so but yeah, I yeah. Don't know so that I don't I need. care. Yeah. yeah, it's a great, it's a great example of how UX touches everything. And, how, yeah. how, how can we use this example for maybe some more uh, real-world things today? I mean, that is a real-world thing. <laughs> well, no, I, I'm yeah. saying like uh, opportunities rather. Brian, so not like things like we are using the cup holder, but maybe there's some things that are more obvious today. And I'm not looking to pitch something on Shark Tank, but I'm saying like, what are some things that I'm, I'm sure you've come across things that you, you've compared this to and said, you know what, I don't know why there's not X, Y, or Z. Well, you know, one of the things I bring up in my the talk I did today was actually this idea of, well, well who defines needs? How do we find needs in the first place? And I pointed out, you've got, you've got two camps on this. You've got people like Steve Jobs or Henry Ford that say, well, oh, it can only come from the innovator, the vision. We're the only yeah. ones who can come up with it. And they don't actually believe if you talk to anybody else, they're going to know what the heck to do. So only these geniuses can do it. There's a whole other camp of people like uh, David Kelly from IDEO who came up with the idea of that's a design thinking, or Jared Spool up in, uh, where's he at now? Boston, um, who only believe that the way to get to the answer is to go to talk to people. Um, 
and the reality is it, it doesn't matter really where the idea for the need comes from, but how we vet them and try to figure out, is this truly a need now? Right. And that's where something like jobs to be done can be very handy because it allows it, because it's a very systematic and quantifiable way to go back and vet the validity of something. So you don't jump the gun on something. Um, I'm thinking now you look at cars, we all have cell phones, all, all have smartphones now that need to be charged. Uh, I think it was Ford just came up with a new thing for their car where you can just lay your phone in. It's got one of those inductive induction oh, chargers on there. Yeah. Which is cool, except for the fact that if I'm using my phone as my GPS, if it's laid down on this thing, yeah. I can't see the screen. So I think something like, you know, a phone holder is going to be that next big thing. That's going to be our next cup holder. Mastering mm. the phone. I think I've and, seen where they lay it down deal. and it automatically syncs with, um, for Google, for Google it syncs. Phones, syncs with your Android auto. And that's how the, uh, the map concept works out. But oh, how the, cool. if, it, yeah. if you've got the, you've the big got screen that, on yeah. there and yeah. yeah. So there, there's a lot of things to do. So maybe that's the thing. It's they start to build more and more of these, Touch screens in cars, which I think is highly dangerous. <laughs> I just want my car to drive drive me where I want to go, and I'll take a nap. <laughs> um, you know, once I get that, then maybe that's all you do need is a place to lay the phone. Let it be <laughs> use it as an induction charger, as a connection point. Yeah, know. maybe. But you know, that could be one of those challenges: solving the issue of well, how do I keep my phone ready and able to use easily without having to take my eyes off the road to make a phone call. Things like that. You know, we've got some of those are getting built in there now. Yeah, like things like uh, having a, a smart glass on your uh, windshield. So right. I could look yeah. at that as a map a as I'm driving. Display, yeah. Exactly. yeah, having that uh, yeah. AR effect, that would be great. I'd find that so annoying. You <laughs> might. Somebody yeah. might not. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know. Yeah. Well, and that's that's beauty. Finding the right segments. That's why you, know, you find those little niche markets that are willing to pay for that. And then you're not playing in the commodity space where yeah. you're just nickel and diming yourself out of business over time. Yeah, I would love to hook my phone up and be able to have that smart screen. That'd be great. Yeah. What would be some of the actionable takeaways from this talk that somebody should? What are the, and, and specifically, I'm, I want to ask you what What do you think should be the things that people take away from this? What I hope people took away from this particular talk is that and needs can come from anywhere, but it's what you do once you have that list of needs you think are important, and that is to quantify them, put them into a priority that matches user expectation by going out and doing say a jobs to be done survey and validating those needs that it's not subjective there are you can get answers even for that you know, the quote that everybody attributes to him if i ask people what they wanted they'd say faster cars there's a need right there i need to get from point a to point b faster if he just went out and started that he could come figure out which way to make that happen he can be the innovator of the solution but he You've got this one problem, and if we don't answer those those key problems, we can't start to change the meaning of things. And that's really what uh, the other part of the talk was. It's about how certain companies are able to change the meaning or provide additional value that wasn't there before by really understanding the need that needed to be addressed, mm -hmm. but also right. understanding how a given solution, what it meant to them, and by figuring out the those two aspects of it, meaningful experience. This is how company you know, like Airbnb transformed the meaning of uh, travel accommodations. Right, yeah. You know, it went from being this very impersonal thing where you stand in line behind some other people waiting to get the key or the, the card yeah. to go up to that little homogenous box <laughs> along with those hundreds of other people that checked in that day to being this very personal relationship between the guest and the host. Oh, yeah, and it really is. I was in New Orleans uh, was last month's project, I think it was. Yeah, last month. And the, it was amazing. I cannot uh, – I there was a key code to get in the fence, and she walked us in, went in the back, beautiful garden in the back. It was like a cottage behind her house, and she had uh, things printed out telling us things in the area. She walked us through the entire um, – cottage she had chips and water for us she had car cards for the local bicycle company where i could rent a bike she just gave suggestions each hope to the first place that we wanted to go to wow. i mean you will not get that at a Maybe. hotel no no and they don't have that concierge service no, not <laughs> yeah. at that level not, not a, and a lot of people would just look at that yeah. as it's the addition of features but it was the fact that those features disrupted the meaning of yes. what yes. this was all about and I can pretty much, if I ask you right now, if you, are you staying in a hotel here right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
can you visually distinguish this hotel room from any other hotel room you've ever stayed in, more or less? Mm, I mean, to like an quality. extent, but n yeah, they're all, I mean, a hotel's a hotel's a The hotel. door was either yeah. on the one end by the bathroom and you walk past the bathroom to come into the big long box, or it was on the other end of the big long box and the bathroom yeah. was at the back of the, right, exactly. they're all basically the same. Yeah, the, the hamster difference. wheel just wasn't there. Right, you know, it's, yeah. they're essentially the same thing. So it, that experience that you just described, that had, I suspect that, that added some additional meaning to that particular oh, trip, yeah. whereas the hotel you're in now stay there. I could care less just the hotel. Right. It could be any hotel that had a free room at this point. There's not and it's not adding additional meaning to your travel right now. No, not at all. Well, it's a place to cap put all your crap down and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. Well it's fantastic talking with you. I, I wish we had more time, but um, is, is there any any uh, any last Things that you'd like to mention, words of, wisdom, words of wisdom, anything to share, and, and how can people reach out to you if they want to talk? to you? Oh, they can find me on Twitter. I'm at uh, at mdonahue37 on Twitter. You can look me up on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to get all nerdy <laughs> over UX. Um, but yeah, really, right now, to me, the big thing is focusing on designing for meaning. That that's where you know that's got to become our new baseline because the. For the longest time, we just thought useful, usable, and desirable, and that's really not enough any longer. We really need to go for useful, usable, and meaningful if we really want to make an oh, impact in this world. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Oh, that's well so, said, sir. Fantastic. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. my pleasure. Yeah, And thanks, everybody, yeah. for watching. Thanks, everybody. Thank